The software I used to design the door and produce all the programs for the CNC. In another legacy video, we got to see Tracy build an entry door for his backyard that has this beautiful glass decorative design. That got me thinking, hey, I need a new entry door for my 60 year old house. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the door that I built for me. Now, my name is Chris Anderson. I'm with the Legacy team. And I just wanna share with you some of the value I got out of doing this door for myself while relating some of the problems I ran into. Now, this is all done again using Legacy's Maverick 4x8 CNC system using three different workstations. We actually have the vertical workstation running along the length of the machine along that turning channel so that we can work on the long edge of our styles for the doors. The other vertical workstation and horizontal workstation will be shown later on in the video. Now, the design of this door is going to be solid wood through and through. So I need to glue up centers for raised panels, as well as produce all the styles and rails. The joinery was slightly different than what Tracy did. His was just standard mortise and tenons to create the outer frame design. Me, I had to create these dado slots going along each style and rail for the raised panels. I took the same concept from Tracy's door and added those deep two and three quarter inch mortise and tenons so that this door is structurally sound and will last a really long time. The long styles required that dado slot across the entire length, as well as three of those deep mortise pockets. The rails, on the other hand, needed to receive just the dado slots after cutting the dados, I was able to take these rails over to our other vertical workstation to machine the tenons that I needed. This was really enjoyable to figure out this joinery to ensure that I had these tenons alongside these square shoulders that fit perfectly into those dado slots. One thing I've learned from personal experience is to do a test cut with your joints before you actually apply this to all of your parts. So here I was able to perform a test cut just on the very top surface so I can measure that with calipers to ensure that everything is dead center before I apply this to the rest of the tenons. Each rail, the top, the middle, and the bottom all needed to receive separate tenon programs that were unique to those components. Being my first door that I designed and programmed, it took me about six hours the first time. Granted, I had to reprogram this three different times as I was figuring things out. The software I used to design the door and produce all the programs for the CNC was the Aspire software from Vetric. This is by far my favorite software to use for three axis functionality like this door. With the styles and rails complete, all that's left is the raised panels. I was able to use the horizontal workstation to produce all of these panels. Now I approached this as a double-sided part. I wanted to see how this would work because the material was 1.75 inches thick. So I figured the material shouldn't move too much if I machine on one side and then flip it over to the second. Well, again, we all learn from our mistakes. I found that even though it was removing minimal material around the bordered edge, it made it so the panel started to cup. So when I flipped it over to the second edge and repeated the same process with that rabbit cutting around the entire perimeter, it actually removed a little too much material so the panels were a little loose when assembling this with the door. Next time I'll have to come up with a different technique in order to make those a little bit more accurate. This same process was repeated for both panels, and now I could perform a dry fit to see how this all came together. I found that the mortise and tenons fit beautifully using a 10 thousandths allowance with the CNC machine. The raised panels slid beautifully, but they were just a little bit too loose in the center section and left a little gap. Now I'm gonna take a minute just to break down some of the time studies and how much I saved according to the type of door that I built. To create the unfinished door slab it took me about seven and a half hours. That was four hours of material prep, an hour of doing the joinery, about an hour and a half to do the double-sided panels, and another hour to glue up and do the trim work on the door. Not having a professional finished shop all set up, 
I spent about 13 hours actually applying all the seal and finish to the door itself. So in total, it took me about 20 and a half hours to produce this new entry door for my house. Now, it was surprising how much I saved on this door if I had to go buy it already finished. The material cost for the LVL styles, as well as all of the lumber needed to glue up the panels, was about $340. Now, I'm also replacing the entire door frame, which cost me an additional $215, and the cost to finish it was about $30. In total, it was about $585 to build this door. Now let's break down some of the market value if you wanted to go buy a door like this yourself. So to buy a door like this that is completely finished and included the cost of a new door frame and everything involved that I've shown here would cost me about $3,400. That saved me over $2,800 just building this door myself. Not bad for a DIY project. But that also means that the saving could turn into potential profit margins if I actually wanted to turn this into a, a part-time business. If I wanted to manufacture unfinished doors, the overhead cost goes down a little bit because I don't have to worry about finished costs or the door frame. Um, and so I can get about a $1,360 profit margin off of a door that I would sell for about $1,700. If I wanted to take it all the way to the end as making a finished door like this that sells at $3,400, Granted, I put 20 and a half hours into that door versus seven and a half hours for the unfinished door. You still have a profit margin for the finished door of $2,815. So you get to decide how much of the process you want to actually take on yourself. Now, I'm not a door expert at all. This is the first time I've got to build an entry door myself. So if you were to perfect your manufacturing processes or actually invest in an actual in equipment to actually finish the process faster, you can get way better results than the numbers I'm using here. It goes without saying that without the legacy CNC and the workstations that gave me the functionality it did, I would not be able to approach a project like this on my own. Not that this couldn't be done without CNC, it's just that for me, the legacy CNC has made it possible to produce something of high quality that I can add to my house. Now these types of videos generate a lot of different questions. I recommend you take advantage of two resources to answer your questions. First is head on over to our website at legacywoodworking.com. There you'll find all the different product information, additional cutting demonstrations, and much more. The second resource I recommend doing is actually getting in contact with one of our CNC experts. You can call them at 801-491-0010. They will be happy to answer any of your questions, put on software or cutting demonstrations with the machines and point you to additional resources, again, to um, fulfill your needs. Now, if you'd like to just simply watch more videos, I don't blame you, just click right over there. I think we all know what to do. If you want to be notified of future videos, uh, just click that button down below and don't hesitate to give us a like if you liked what you saw. As always, thanks for watching. And remember, Legacy solves more woodworking problems and allows you to say yes to more opportunities than any other CNC manufacturer in the industry.